Hi, my name is Marius, and today I'll be talking about EVAP purge solenoids, also called canister purge solenoids, canister purge valves, and onboard refueling purge solenoids. The EVAP purge solenoid is an integral part of the evaporative control system on a vehicle. Vehicles have had uh, vapor-operated canisters since the early 70s, but with the introduction of OBD2 in 1996, EVAP purge solenoids became popular. In this video, I will be talking about the location of the EVAP purge solenoid in the vehicle, its purpose and operation, and I'll also be doing a demonstration of how the EVAP purge solenoid works, and I will also be talking about some failures that could happen and how to diagnose them. Next, I'll be talking about the location of the EVAP purge solenoid. This is a 2000 Acura MDX. As you can see, this is the fuel tank. From the fuel tank, this line goes all the way up here to where the canister is at. You can see the canister right there. And then from the canister, there is a line going from here all the way up into the engine bay here. The line under the vehicle goes here up into the perch solenoid. And then from the perch solenoid, the line goes into the throttle body. Next, we'll talk about the purpose and operation of the EVAP PERT solenoid. This is the evaporative emissions control system of the 2000 Acura MDX. The purpose of the EVAP control system is to capture fuel vapors from the fuel tank and not allow them to enter the atmosphere. And the purpose of the EVAP PERT solenoid is to return those fuel vapors back into the engine so they can be used for combustion. Let's start at the fuel tank. From the fuel tank, the fuel vapors travel through this red line into the EVAP canister where they are stored. From the EVAP canister, the fuel vapors travel to the EVAP perch valve. Under certain light load engine conditions, the PCM or powertrain control module will energize the EVAP perch solenoid. The EVAP perch solenoid will then act as a gate to allow the fuel vapors to be drawn into the engine through the use of engine vacuum where they will be reused for combustion. The PCM, at the same time as it energizes the EVAP PERT solenoid, will look for an increase in O2 sensor voltage, and from that increase, it will know that purge occurred. Now, we will look at the wiring diagram of the 2000 Acura MDX. You can see the EVAP PERT solenoid circled in red. PERT solenoid receives battery voltage in hot, on, or start through the driver's under dash fuse relay box. The, tr the power travels through the black and yellow wire to the EVAP PERT solenoid. When the PCM wants to command the PERT solenoid on, it switches the ground on and off. The PERT solenoid is controlled through pulse width modulation, which means that a duty cycle is applied to the solenoid. Next, I will show the operation of the EVAP PERT solenoid on a bench. Now I'll show you the operation of the EVAP purge solenoid. As you can see, the solenoid has an arrow on it, which indicates the direction of flow. If I blow compressed air at it with the solenoid off, no air passes through. But if I turn on the jump box and I blow air in through the solenoid, the air passing through and moving the paper. Next, let's talk about some failures that could happen with the EVAP PERT solenoid. The coil windings in the solenoid could be open or have high resistance. The solenoid could have no power either through a faulty ignition switch in the case of the Acura MDX, a blown fuse, or a open, shorted, or high resistance power wire. The ground could also be an issue if the ground side wire is shorted, open, or has high resistance. The PCM could also be defective if it can't close the ground to the solenoid. Lastly, the solenoid could be stuck open or closed. If it's stuck open, the engine will perform like it has a vacuum leak. Now we will talk about how to diagnose some of the failures of the EVAP PERT solenoid. According to the wire diagram of the Acura MDX, the EVAP PERT solenoid should have battery voltage applied to it in the on or start position through the black and yellow wire. I will demonstrate this in the next clip. If you see 
battery voltage applied to the evap hertz solenoid when the ignition switch is in the on or start position then you can then you know that the circuits fuse and ignition switch are intact you can see the connector of the evap hertz solenoid is back probed into the black and yellow wire in the bottom right corner when i turn the ignition switch on you can see the multimeter showing battery voltage being applied to the evap pert solenoid. The next thing you can test for is an open, shorter, or high resistance coil in the pert solenoid. Unfortunately, the Acura MDX will not set a diagnostic trouble code for the evap pert solenoid, so it will not tell you resistance specifications of the coil. So, let's look at the diagnostics for a P0443 code for evap pert solenoid control circuit on a 2014 Chevy Silverado. The diagnostics tell you to unplug the solenoid and check its resistance. The specification is 10 to 30 ohms. I'll demonstrate this on the Acura MDX. You have to check the resistance with the connector unplugged. You can see that the resistance is 33 ohms. Because the solenoid works on the bench, the resistance of this coil is within the specifications. If the PERT solenoid has power and the resistance of the coil is within specifications, you should check the integrity of the ground circuit. You can check the resistance of the red and yellow wire going to the PCM, which should be close to zero ohms. If the ground wire is okay, then the issue is with the PCM's internal circuitry or its power and ground connection. Lastly, you can check for a stuck open or closed solenoid with the same demonstration I performed earlier in the video with the solenoid disconnected and direct power and ground applied to it. <clears throat> Another test you can do is with scan tool output controls. So this is a 2014 Chevrolet Silverado with a 5.3 engine. With a Solus Edge snap-on scan tool, I can command the EVAP perch solenoid on, and you can actually hear the perch solenoid clicking. For the last part, I'll demonstrate the PCM commanding the PERT solenoid on under certain conditions with a 2009 Infiniti FX35. In the top left, you can see the engine RPM. In the top right, you can see the vehicle speed. And in the bottom, you can see the commanded evaporative perch as a percentage. Now I'll acceler accelerate to a cruise speed of about 41 miles per hour. While I'm accelerating, you can already see the evaporative perch being commanded and as I get up to 41 you can see the evaporative purge is about 75 to 80 percent. For this next part I will accelerate to 40 miles per hour and then I will accelerate faster and you can see the commandative evaporative purge is at 0% under heavy engine loads.